Welcome to Decode ITES. This is a single learning platform for multiple IT infrastructure technologies. Do like, share and subscribe our channel to never miss out our videos. Let's continue with the learning. Let's have a small introduction of myself. My name is Prince Berg. I'm having three plus years of work experience and worked on the app, VMware, Windows, Google Cloud, PowerShell, Python and Bash script. Kindly follow us on Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, and reach out to us on ites1.com. So in today's video, we will learn the concepts of Linux kernel. What is Linux kernel? The Linux kernel is the main component of Linux operating system and is the core interface between computers, hardware and its processes. It communicates between these two, managing resources as efficiently as possible. The kernel is so named because like a seed in a hard shell, it exists within the OS and controls all the major functions of the hardware, whether it's a phone, laptop, server or any kind of computer. Now, what the kernel does? Kernel performs four jobs very efficiently. Memory management. Keep track of how much memory is used to store what and where. Process management. Determine which processes can use a central processing unit when and for how long. Device drivers. Act as mediator, interpreter between the hardware and processes. System calls and security. Receive request for service from the processes. And the kernel, if implemented properly, is invisible to the user working on its own little world known as kernel space, where it allocates memory and keeps track of where everything is stored. What the user sees, like web browsers and files, are known as the user space, the front end, which user is interacting with. These applications interact with kernel through a system call interface, which is called SCI. Think about it like this. The kernel is a busy personal assistant for a powerful executive, which we can say the hardware. It's the assistant's job to relay messages and requests, which, which we can say processes, from employees and the public, which we can say users, to the executive, to remember what is stored where, like memory and to determine who has access to the executive at any given time and for how long. So here we have mentioned powerful executive is the hardware and the processes are the requests like the assistant's job and from public and uh, employees which we can say the users to remember what is the record where is the memory it's all about the complete combination of the hardware processes users memory the kernel take care of all of this now where the kernel fits within the os um to put the kernel in context you can think of a linux machine as having three layers the hardware the linux kernel and the user processes the physical machine, uh, the bottom uh, of the system, made up of the hardware. The physical machine, the bottom or we can say the base of the system, made up of memory, RAM, and the processor or central processing unit we can say, as well as input output devices such as storage, networking, graphics. The CPU performs computations and reads from and writes to the memory. The Linux kernel, the core of the OS. Yes, it's right in the middle. It's software residing in memory that tells the CPU what to do. And now it comes with the user processes. They are the running programs that the kernel manages. User processes what collectively make up user space. User processes are also known as just processes. The kernel also allows these processes and servers to communicate with each other, 
known as inter process communication ipc so is linux a kernel or an operating system you must be confused let's clarify it well uh, there is a difference between kernel and os kernel as it is the heart of os which manages the core features of an os while if some useful applications and utilities are added over the kernel then the complete package becomes an os so it can easily be said that an operating system consists of a kernel space and a user space and so we can say that linux is a kernel as it does not include applications like file system utilities windowing systems and graphical desktop system administrator commands text editors compilers so various companies add these kind of applications over linux kernel and provide the operating system like ubuntu open source centos red hat etc now the types and categories of kernel we are having monolithic and micro kernel over the environment first we will discuss monolithic kernels earlier in this type of kernel architecture all the basic system services like process and memory management interrupt handling etc were packaged into a single module in kernel space this type of architecture led to some serious drawbacks like uh, size of kernel which was huge poor maintainability which means bug fixing or addition of new features resulted in recompilation of the whole kernel which could consume hours in a modern day approach to monolithic architecture um the kernel consists of different modules which can be dynamically loaded and unloaded this modular approach allows easy extension of os capabilities with this approach maintainability of kernel became very easy as only the concerned module needs to be loaded and unloaded every time there is a charge or bug fix in a particular module so there is no need to bring down and recompile the whole kernel for a smallest bit of change also a stripping of kernel for various platforms became very easy as we can easily unload the module that we do not want Linux follows the monolithic modular approach. Now, we comes with micro kernel. The architecture majorly caters to the problem of ever growing size of kernel code, which we could not control in a monolithic approach. This architecture allows some basic services like device driver management, protocol stack, file system, etc., to run in user space. This reduces the kernel code size and also increases the security and scalability of OS. As we have the bare minimum code running in kernel, so if suppose a basic service like network service crashes due to buffer overflow, then only the network services memory would be corrupted, leaving the rest of the system still functional. In this architecture, all the basic OS services. which are made part of the user space are made to run as servers which are used by another programs in the system though inter process communication which you can say ipc we have servers for device drivers network protocol stacks um file systems graphic etc and micro kernel servers are essentially daemon program like any others except that the kernel grants some of the privileges to interact with parts of physical memory that are uh, otherwise off limits to most programs this allows some servers particularly device drivers to interact directly with the hardware these servers are started at the system startup so what the bare minimum that micro kernel architecture recommends in the kernel space managing memory production process scheduling and ipc inter process communication apart from the above all other basic services can be made part of user space and can be run in the form of servers we'll continue another lecture of shell in our next video thanks for watching do like share and comment our videos also subscribe to our channel